If you love $9 Monday and $2 Tuesday, you're really going to appreciate our new throwback Thursday when all daily packages are slashed in half. Yes, you heard right at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. All Thursday daily packages are now 50% off. This means that a 4% package will be only $12.50. A 5% top-rated play, normally priced at $35, will be only $17.50. And the hottest sales item of the day, get a full day of access from the handicappers of your choice. That's one day of every applicable play they release, including any 5% best bets, normally priced at $39, for only $19.50. The best part is you can come back every Thursday to take advantage of this limited time 50% off spring off. What's up, guys? Welcome in here to Wager Talk TV. This is Puck Time. I'm Andrew McGinnis. I've got Carmine Bianca with me and Don Buster mixing it up this week. He's with us here on a Thursday to break down these games. Four games to go over. Best bets at the end of the show. And I'm looking forward to profiting with these guys today and finding some winners. Last night, uh, what a response from the Dallas Stars. They take it 7-3. Rupe hints with a hat trick. Jason Robertson with a big game. They bounce back in a huge way. Hate to see it for Marc-Andre Fleury, but I have a feeling that uh, Philip Gustafson will probably be the goaltender for the rest of the playoffs for the Minnesota Wild. The Oilers bounce back as well. The Florida Panthers bounce back. And the Islanders do their best to bounce back, but they come up short and lose to the Hurricanes in overtime. What a night that it was. It was a one-in-one night for me as far as official client plays. My best bet, however was Edmonton in regulation. We did cash that puck time best bet, though, with Stars in the first period on the money line. So I'm happy, but a little disappointed I didn't give out more plays. But I'm you know, keeping that low-volume approach, and uh, we'll keep doing that throughout these playoffs. So 6-2 and two for me in the postseason in the entirety. Meanwhile, Carm goes 5-1 and one in one night. What's up, Carm? Yes, guy. Um, I was pretty happy about it. Um, but the the show best bet, which was the only play I lost, it was a client play uh, on uh, the pasta man. Man, like just two shots early in the first period he gets, and then on a power play, uh, three shots where he completely misses the net. And I'm just like, okay, uh, this, this one is unfortunately going to be my only loss on the night. But I'll take a five-in-one night overall. I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, about that, uh, some great games. Uh, the Dallas game, my God, the goals just kept coming in that game. And when you you had messaged me and, and you're and you're like, uh, uh, Flurry's starting. Uh, they're rotating goalies. I'm like, yeah, they did that during the regular season. I didn't think they were going to do that in the playoffs. Like, I think you you go with the guy who's your best one. And Flurry didn't look like his uh, normal self, but he hasn't looked like his normal self in the last couple of uh, in the last year plus. Or so, so I'm, I'm, I was pretty shocked that they uh, they went that way, but I think you're right. I think it's going to be Gustafson. If it's not uh, Gustafson back to back in the games in Minnesota, I would be really surprised. But that was a great series, uh, or that was a great game. Uh, it shot well over that uh, total of five and a half goals, and at four one, Andrew, like uh, this game's done. It's, this game is done. Dallas is just rolling over them, and then Minnie scores two goals in eleven seconds and i'm like wow this game is back on la kings same thing uh they just don't die they just will not die and listen i was on the regulation play like you yesterday on the oilers but the whole world was on the edmonton Oilers in regulation and it looked uh it looked a little sketchy for a while there in the third period but they get a goal win that game and that's all that really matters we're looking forward to four big games today man. i'm looking forward to these uh, these game twos tonight, uh, it's going to shape a lot of what happens in the game threes, much like yesterday did. Uh, and here, finally back, join his Mexican son, Don Buster. How you enjoying playoffs, my man? Yes, I uh, enjoying them quite well. Uh, had a nice 3-0 and night last night. Uh, my two series plays are looking pretty good. So everything is well. I am back in Mexico, which makes me... Really, really happy. It's a beautiful 95 degrees right now, and I'm a couple hours behind, so it's about roughly 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, really nice. A couple things. I want to wish everyone a happy 420, uh, whether if you partake in 
such uh, activities. Uh, have fun today. Also, I would like to thank the great Brian Leonard for switching with me today. And now that the Leafs have lost the game, it will be very enjoyable to talk about them today. So thank you, Brian. Much appreciated. And very looking forward to these games. I'm telling you, what a play. We're, we kind of all talked about it earlier in the year that, the, you know, there's so much parity now in the league. Uh, and it's, there's going to see you're going to see some teams get upset. We don't know who yet, but there's going to be some teams getting upset. And uh, we might talk about a few of those teams tonight. And really, like some again, every game is a great game when it comes to NHL playoffs. And anybody that doesn't watch the sport do not know what they're missing. And uh, one other little thing I'd like to say: good to see Andrew again. It's the first time I have seen him. Been on a show with him since we met in Toronto. And uh, it was a very enjoyable night that night, Andrew. And it was, uh, I was unfortunate that I was in Canada, but uh, that was one of the pluses. It was great to meet you in person, finally. It's so weird when you feel like you know somebody for like many years. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, great to have some drinks with you and Carm. It was a great time. And uh, I, can't, I can't lie, I'm pretty jealous you're watching playoff hockey in the sun, having some beers there in Mexico. So, guys, I wanted to say real quick, let's start the show off, but all kinds of NBA handicappers right now are talking about how they're happy. There's all kinds of meaningful games right now, and they're they're finding it easier to handicap. I'm not saying it's easier, but I agree with them that with this format that Gary Bettman put together, there were lots of matchups and playoff teams that knew they were in the playoffs or knew who they were playing for months. And now that the playoffs are here, every single game means something, obviously. And I'm just so happy about it because over the past two months, the regular season, it seemed like there were so many games for top teams against Anaheim or Arizona Coyotes and things that just did not matter. So it's just so nice to have all these games mean something. And of course, with that being said, today we have the Rangers Devils. We have Tampa Bay Lightning and Toronto. We have the Winnipeg Jets and Vegas Golden Knights. And the nightcap will be Colorado playing host to the Seattle Kraken. Let's start things off with game two at the Prudential Center in New Jersey as the Devils play host to the Rangers. They're minus 135. The Rangers are plus 115. Total at five and a half, slightly leaning towards the over in this one. Carmel, I'll give you the first uh, the first uh, opportunity to let us know what you like in this game. Uh, I guess Carmel doesn't want to cash, talk. Uh, cash. Cash the ticket, that's guys. That's I muted shot. myself because I muted myself because number one, I just couldn't listen to Buster anymore. I, you know, we're running out of time. But number two is I've got construction going on outside of my home here, and uh, you guys don't need to listen to it. I have a super sensitive mic that picks up everything. Uh, even me putting my coffee mug down on the table, someone com commented yesterday that you can hear it. But with that said, Andrew, you know, you look at this game and. Uh, it, it it's interesting because I, I liked the Rangers in this series, and I talked about uh, teams winning. Uh, teams that the best uh, the best thing for a dog in a series is uh, is to win that first game, and we saw six of eight road dogs win um, uh, game one. So this is one of those ones where I think I mentioned, you know, whoever lost game one, I was likely going to take the the loser of game one to come back in game two. And uh, that obviously happened to, to New Jersey in that one. Rangers outplayed them and won that game. And you're getting Jersey at minus 135, which is pretty much the same as what they were in game one, I believe. You would think that these teams are going to split, but um, the, the little devil in me, uh, pun intended, uh, really wants the Rangers to win because I want to catch that Rangers series. But I think the Rangers, I think uh, the Devils are the, uh, the right spot here. They can't go down 2 nothing. Uh, on a two nothing hole here and head back to Madison Square Garden. Uh, this series could be over a lot quicker than the six or seven games. I was thinking it's likely going to go. I have a slight lean on the over because I just think that we're going to see some goals as well. We saw a ton of goals yesterday in games that people were expecting unders, and we saw a bunch of overs. Uh, it wasn't playoff hockey per se. Uh, uh, while it was playoff hockey, it was playoff hockey with a lot of scoring, and that could very well be what happens on uh, the Rock tonight. I have a slight lean to the over, but I'm going to take New Jersey uh, in this one, and I'm not entirely sure that this will make my card, 
I may have a slight lean, uh, a smaller play on the total in this game, but I do lean to New Jersey here. So I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Devils and a slight lean to the over, and the over might make my card a little later on today. Buster, give me your thoughts. Yeah, well, Carmine, I guess everybody will be thinking that way as far as uh, taking New Jersey. Uh, I find this very interesting. You mentioned it. These road teams uh, winning the, that first game. Now we all we all know what happened last night. The two the two road teams. I mean the two the two yeah the two road teams that won. Uh, they, they they met some trouble last night as Dallas and Edmonton. Those two home clubs tied up those series. And I think and, and every one of these series, I think that's necessary for the home club tonight because you don't want to go down 0-2 and then have to travel to that stadium's uh, to, to that team's stadium. So uh, very 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 interesting games tonight. I thought the Rangers, if they play like that, like they played against New Jersey the first game, they're going to be very tough to beat. I don't care, Boston. They're going to be very tough to beat. I thought they played an excellent game. Problem is, on the road again, not sure if they can duplicate that game tonight. It's kind of it's, it's tough to play uh, solid hockey like that, like to play their your best. I do like New Jersey, like yourself, Carmine, to bounce back here. I think, uh, I don't know whether I wouldn't say they were gun shy, but they're a young club. For, you know, in the playoffs, it's uh, kind of a little bit new experience going up against uh, Shesterkin, you know, which is always intimidating because, I mean, he just can stone teams. So I really do like New Jersey tonight. I don't know if I can trust them to win the game, though. What I do like, I like them in the first period. And I've already put it out as a free play on uh, the Sports Memo Free Picks uh, page. And you get minus 120 for New Jersey as on the money lane on the money line for the first period money line. So I, I, I like that bet. I think they have to come out. And I think you're going to see a lot of these teams, uh, and I'll talk about it later on, you're going to see a lot of these teams that, that won that first game think to themselves, you know what, okay, we know it's coming. These guys are desperate to win because you don't want to go down 0-2. So they might just almost sit back and just kind of take that first onslaught and then play the game. So I do like New Jersey here as a play for the first period. As far as the total car mine, I, I'm a, I kind of lean under. I know what you're saying. There's a ton of firepower, so it's not making my card. But I have to believe uh, it might be tough to uh, score on these guys. And I think New Jersey has to play a little bit better defensively. And, uh, again, the, the total is just, to me, is just a crapshoot. So I want no part of it. Give us a New Jersey first period money line. You know, Buster, I really like those first period plays come playoff time because I really think that you can kind of at least you're handicapping how a team's going to come out. But as you as you mentioned, you don't know if you can trust them for the full game. So I like your handicap there with that one. Um, for me, overall, looking at this one, the way I look at it is New Jersey. I think, you know, everyone's expecting them to bounce back. But here's my deal with New Jersey is that I don't think if they win a game in the series or I think they probably will win a game, obviously, but. I don't think that they can win a low scoring game. So I, I think that they have to they have to reach that magic number of three, maybe four to win a hockey game against this Rangers team. I mean, the guys that were productive in game one were the guys that they picked up at the trade deadline. I'm talking about Vladimir Tarasenko scoring the first goal of the game. Patrick Kane heavily involved and Mika Zibanejad had himself a great game as well. I just don't see the Devils slowing down the Rangers' offense. To me, this is a game where it's first to four goals wins, which is why I'm looking towards the over five and a half in this one. Look, I mean, New York goes two of three on the power play. New Jersey does not capitalize once on the power play. But here's what's crazy, guys. New York put up the amount of goals they did on 23 shots. You know, I'm not always a guy that just talks about shots on goal because – you could have 30 shots on goal. They might not be quality shots, but for New York to only have 23 shots on goal, I get it. Two of those goals were power play goals, but for them to capitalize on those is very interesting. And the way they were able to take advantage of it, I think that they should be able to do it again. Now, guys, a play I mentioned on this show last time and a play I gave to my clients was the Rangers team total over two and a half goals. They're plus money again. That, as Carm mentioned, the, the price is pretty much the same in this one as it was last game. You can get the over two and a half team total for the Rangers again at minus 135. That exact same wager is minus 180 
for the New Jersey Devils. This is from DraftKings Sportsbook. So um, obviously they're expecting New Jersey to bounce back. They haven't tweaked their numbers really at all uh, in this one. And, and really, guys, if I'm recommending something, I'm recommending the over. Or I would take a look at that Rangers team total over again because I think that's a very fair price, minus 135 for them to get to three goals. So uh, I'll say over five and a half, but uh, a little bit shocked that we didn't see that number move at all with that team total. Now let's move on to uh, our series number two uh, and game number two in Toronto with the Maple Leafs hosting the Lightning here. They're minus 170, Tampa Bay plus 145. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, Quick update on the injuries. Uh, Chernak will be out uh, for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hedman is a game-time decision. Uh, that's from what I know. If anybody, if either Buster or Carm knows or anyone in the comments, you guys can correct me. Feel free. Uh, Michael Bunting will be serving a three-game suspension. I thought that was a little bit rough. I thought it would be about two games, but uh, we now see the total at six and a half, shaded once again, minus 120 towards the under. Buster, we all have our fun, and we could have fun all day laughing about game one, but uh, what are you expecting here for game two? Yeah, Andrew, that was it was a kind of nice outcome uh, when you're a Montreal fan and you hate the Leafs. And just want to let everybody know, like all the Toronto fans, as Carmine, I, I lived about an hour away. I grew up an hour away. All my best friends for 35, 40 years are all diehard Leaf fans. It's not about the fans. I love you guys. It's I hate the team. And you know why I hate the team? Because they've screwed over the fans so much, making them pay high price, not letting the ordinary fan go to a game. It's all corporations, stuff like that. And then not putting a product out there for years and years and years that people, that the fans could enjoy. You know, and now that they have it, what the have they done? I've said on here for a lot of, lot of last three years anyways, I still believe that Keith's not the guy, still believe they need goaltending. They might win this series. It's only one game. Everybody knows that. But, again, these same things keep creeping in. Even myself, I thought maybe this year was going to be different for the Leafs. And it still may be different for them. But just by that first game, if you're a Leaf fan, you're, you're sick to your stomach because you're, you're seeing all the same things in the very first game that will cause you not to win a cup this year again. And I'm just saying that as a fact, not, not just a Leafs hater, but it's a fact. This is exactly right. And if, as a true Leaf fan, you guys know this, and uh, I know you guys want to win. And you know what? Who knows? You might be able to get through this series, but there's no way you're getting through Boston. That's the way I look at it. Anyways, to the game. I got a funny feeling, guys. Not going to be... Uh, too happy tonight, but I am going to play the Leafs for the first period, like same as the, the last game. I'm playing with them for the first period on the money line. You get minus 140. Not going to lay 170, 180 for the Leafs, and really I have a hard time even betting the Leafs, period, so I usually just pass. But I think the Leafs' first period is a good play only because, I mean, the way they lost last game, I got to believe Samsonov has to play better has to play better in that there's a couple suspect goals but again Vasilevsky he didn't play that well either that should be a scary thought for a Leaf fan because you know he's stealing a game somewhere along the line uh again if you really like the Leafs if you think that they're going to come out and fly, you could even uh lay the puck line for the first period maybe they come out because remember the two teams that needed to win last night Edmonton and Dallas both home teams both home Team big favorites, they both won that first period. They came out both in 2-0 leads. I think Dallas ended up being 2-1. So I think there's something there with these uh, games tonight as far as the first period for those home clubs. As far as the total, it's six. Got to believe that they played better defense but, you know, tonight. I, I, don't, I don't see uh, Toronto giving up those many, that many goals. I, got, I have to think that they play, play way better than they did defensively. Because if they don't, they go down 0-2. It's, it's history for them. They're not, they're not going to be able to beat a Tampa Bay club with that experience. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, again, I think Toronto is the play. There's no way I'm going to cheer for a Leaf victory, but I will be cheering for the Leafs to win the first period tonight. All right, a first period play here for Buster. Like I said, I like those first period plays. You don't have to win the full game. 
Just win the 20 minute frame. Carm, what do you have for us here? Game two, Leafs and Bolts. Um, I, I'm good. I'm this is something I'm gonna be repeating again in the last game. Guys, the worst thing I believe you can do uh with these playoff games is uh is being like too reactionary looking at one game and thinking this is it they're done you know if you look at it there's a difference between me coming on and saying listen i'm going to take the team that lost in game one i'm going to take them in team in, in game two because uh i'm doing that in number one in series where i expect it to go six or seven games where teams are going to win on the road and I expect them to split out, kind of like the Minnesota-Dallas one uh, being one of them. You have to draw a line through games like the, the 7-3 game, the Tampa Bay in game one against Toronto. You have to draw a line through uh, the Boston Bruins getting blown out at home in game two because it doesn't matter whether they lost 6-3, 7-3, or 2-1. to one. They, they got, I get it. They lost the game. Uh, you may not like the way they lost it, but you can't become over-reactionary uh, uh, reactionary and then – jump on a team will the leafs win tonight i'm not i'm not certain uh if they're going to win tonight they've got to be able to play better than they played in game one they never envisioned they were going to play game one the way they played it they went out they threw the body they tried to be too physical they gave tampa bay a lot of ice and tampa bay made them pay for it last year the leafs beat tampa in game one five nothing in toronto and tampa made the adjustments and went and won the second game I, I believe it was five to three or five to two in the second game the five middle games in that series, game one and game seven, were the lowest scoring games at five nothing and two one. Every other game in that in in that series went over the total, and I expect to see some goals tonight. Now, where it comes from, I don't care. I'm going to use that phrase. I don't care who wins. I think we're going to see some goals. You can take the first period here over because I think we're going to see some goals in this first period minus one forty um, on the over one and a half. As far as bunting being gone. <clears throat> Yeah, three games is harsh, but uh, I, I think the way Bunting's been over the last month, month and a half of this season, probably uh, is one of the reasons why he got that. And it was, it was a pretty ugly hit. You can, If you're a Lee fan, you think it was nothing. If you're a Tampa fan, you think he deserved a year. If you're a normal fan, you expected him to get suspended. So what he got is what he got. The Leafs lines at practice were Matthew Marner, and Yarn Rock, Kerfoot, Tavares, Nylander, uh, knees who is uh, who will be in the lineup with O'Reilly and, uh, and Akari, uh, and then they have also got obviously uh, Aston Reese, Lafferty, a camp. Um, um, so as far as that goes, there's not a drop off on their lines because Bunting's out of the lineup. Uh, as Andrew has said before on shows, Bunting should have never been on the first line. Anyways, uh, he was elevated and was scoring points because he's with Marner and Matthews, who you can put anyone's lines and they're going to get the points. I see goals in this one, but I see goals in the first period. Uh, guys, don't overreact to one game in a series. Uh, give it at least a couple games before you decide that this team is done and dusted. Uh, will the Leafs rebound tonight? I think a lot of people believe they will. I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to take the over in the first period. You know, Carm, uh, I was just shooting a video yesterday with uh, with Kelly Stewart talking about that, and that that was one of my biggest tips on the video was not overreacting to certain things. Um, and I, I do agree. There's certain things, of course, you can learn from game one. I'll tell you one thing I learned from game one um, was that Tampa Bay still has the ability to score those those nasty goals, right? They've got they've got a top six and they have a bottom six. And it's very clear what each of those roles are for those guys, right? Nobody expects Corey Perry to do anything, but he had three minutes of ice time in the first period drew a penalty and got an assist on a goal. I, I mean, this is kind of what they do, the Tampa Bay Lightning. And as far as what Buster said about the coaching, I, I have to agree. I mean, when you're at home, you play all season long for home ice advantage. These teams knew they were playing each other for three months, pretty much actually since January. Or I get, yeah, so a couple months now. When you have home ice advantage, you should be winning the line battles. John Cooper shouldn't be throwing out his fourth line and then the second the puck drops, his first line comes out and Sheldon Keefe is confused in the bench. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Everybody's talking about the refereeing and, and all the goals and the special teams and what happened there with that in game one. It was very heated. And I think that with Bunting being out, he's a character guy. But the problem is he crossed the line too many times. Like Carm mentioned, takes bad penalties. 
Guys, we saw six goals in game one on the power play. I like under six and a half here. I think the Maple Leafs were a better team this regular season than they were last year because they actually finally started winning low scoring games. I I'm shocked to even hear myself say it because this is what the Leafs are now, but they are a better team when they are controlling and managing the game. I don't think they actually want to get into a pond hockey game against the Lightning. They need a good effort from Samsonov. They need to kill penalties when they take them and protect their own end. So uh, a little bit contrarian for me, I guess, on this one. I'm going to go under six and a half uh, in this one and, and think that that's really the recipe for the Maple Leafs to come out on top and bounce back. I don't think it's scoring four or five goals. I think it's playing good defense. So I'll go under six and a half and we'll move on to our third game, Winnipeg and Vegas. And, and Carm, I complained and complained and complained about that bad beat for the under, but... When it comes down to it, the storyline in that one was Winnipeg cashing that underdog ticket, but not just by one or two goals. They scored five goals and beat Vegas 5-1 at T-Mobile Arena. What do you think here for Game 2, Jets and Knights? Uh, Andrew, as I just said in the previous game, uh, the re reactionary thing here. Listen, uh, this is going to be an unpopular opinion with a lot of people but i'm going to say it this price keeps creeping up on vegas and keeps going mm -hmm. higher uh the live lines I, i've seen it just changed to minus 170 now on the vegas golden knights plus 145 on uh plus 145 on winnipeg and i'll tell you this i'm uh much like the series and i'm not comparing it to the series but i'm uh, I, i'm drawing parallels much like the series where uh in 2018 19 where uh, Tampa Bay finishes a first overall and then lose four games to Columbus. They lose game one, and th the world was on Tampa Bay in game two and game three, and I was part of the world on that one. I lost money on that series. I am not going to lie. Uh, I joked around about being able to build another wing to the house if I did not continue to lose money on Tampa Bay in that series, and they were done in four. This Winnipeg team, people aren't giving them credit. They are playing some very good hockey they're playing some very good defensive hockey they went in played the perfect road trip and beat the vegas golden knights in game one and they very well could do it in game two everyone is going to be on the vegas golden knights tonight because they think they can't lose it's much like yesterday everyone was on the edmonton oilers it was a 3-2 game that they won and they did what they were supposed to do dallas did the same thing it does not mean guys, that uh, it's an auto win that you just put a check mark beside Vegas and mm -hmm. you move on to the next game. If I get the right, and we're, I'm getting close to getting the right price, I said before the show, if I can get plus 150 on Winnipeg in this game and we're getting close to it, I'm going to take the Jets in this game. The value is there for me to take a shot on Winnipeg. And uh, even if the, the Golden Knights come out and bounce back, you're still going to get a very tough defensive game from the Winnipeg Jets tonight. They're not going to roll over. They would love nothing better than to win game two. All the pressures on the Dallas Stars, just the same. Sorry, not Dallas Stars. Uh, the Vegas Golden Knights, just the way it was on the Dallas Stars, just the way it was on the Edmonton Oilers. And the same way it's going to be on the Colorado Avalanche tonight to not go down two games before you hit the road. And that's all the pressure. Um, I think Winnipeg could steal this game. It's an unpopular position, but I'm going to take it. So um, give me Winnipeg to steal this one tonight. And uh, I'll move on to Buster for his thoughts. Well, Carmine, it might, you say it's an unpopular position. Of course you can see that. Just like uh, you had talked about the earlier game with uh, Tampa Bay and Toronto, where you said the uh, same thing, but you said there's you figure Toronto's going to win. Yeah, I mean, it's the playoff hockey right now. Anything can happen. And Vegas looked terrible. I mean, just a complete no-show. How do you no-show at home? In the third period, goalie lets in a bad goal to make it 3-1. That was their death right there. That was it, right? They, and they just, I mean, I think they had two or three shots on goal in the third period. How does that even happen? Have to believe Cassidy gets these guys going. Yeah, you're right. You can't just willy-nilly take that team that lost the first game at home. But we have some really good clubs at home. And I am actually admitting Toronto is a really good club. At home, that are, if you ask me, they're in do or die. 
situation. I know they can come back from 0-2, but I'd love to see what uh, Ralph has on something like that, being down 0-2 and then going on the road. A lot of teams win series is going down down 0-2 at, at home, and then they get two home games, and they tie it up 2-2, and you go zigzag and go seven games. But being down 0-2, very, very tough. Got to believe Vegas comes out with their – their best game tonight. They really have to. The real problem, I did bet Vegas, got them early at 150, but I am worried about Connor. He just looks like he's going to have, and if, and if Winnipeg makes it through here, they might be able to upset another team as well. Like I know, again, we're talking way down the road. It's one game Vegas could come back and beat, win four games to one. But Winnipeg, I agree, Carmen, looks very good. They have what it need, what you need in the NHL playoffs, and that's a great goaltender, and they're doing well. But myself, I think Vegas, like the world, I guess, as you said, but like you said, the world won uh, yesterday on Edmonton in regulation, and uh, Joe Public's been doing really well in all sports. Now that there's so much information out there, a lot of guys are realizing to they're just doing their homework, which I, I love that people are doing their homework, going through stuff. That's great. That's what makes you a better, better. So uh, give me Vegas here. I'll be with Joe Public. Yeah, I mean, uh, two Buster, days there's ago, nothing, every- there's nothing wrong. Every- there's not Buster. There's nothing wrong. Sorry, Andrew, to jump in. There's nothing wrong with being Joe Public sometimes because, uh, and Andrew mentioned it uh, earlier and on a, a previous show, uh, a lot of these games are, uh, at least for me, uh, I've been going the way uh, I've been seeing them, I and even in the last couple of weeks of the NHL season. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try and reinvent the wheel and find something that isn't there, or or, or look at a different strategy. Maybe if I was struggling in the playoffs and I'm off to a really good start in the playoffs, nine and three thus far, uh, maybe I would look uh, a different way. But uh, as you said, do your homework. As long as you're doing your homework. And don't just auto bet. Don't just say to yourselves, okay, well, you know, uh, Vegas lost the first game. I'm going to take Vegas in the second game. Uh, Colorado lost the first game to Seattle. I'm going to take Colorado in the second game. It's just at least do a little bit of homework, uh, put it in some type of an effort. Right, Mr. McKinnis? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. uh, We're all jumping in on you. I just just want to make the point of, yeah, I I get that, but – these are teams is the way they got beat. That, that's what it does for me. It's the way they got beat and the pride on these teams. And if you've watched hockey for so long, I mean, if it was a close game and they got beat, you know what, Winnipeg, but this is the way they got beat. I can't believe a, a team like Vegas would just pack it in again tonight, right? It's the way they got beat, I think, really stands out to some of these teams, especially you know, I, teams I that are agree quality. With that, actually. I have to agree with that because I, I agree that uh, with Carm saying about the overreactions, but I think that I was just as shocked as you guys or every, anybody about five goals from Winnipeg. Like I figured any game they'd win would be like them winning like three, one. So five goals is pretty impressive. One of those is being an empty net goal though. Of course, uh, before we get to the last game, guys, uh, I want to let everyone know it's throwback Thursday at wagertalk.com. All picks uh, available right now, 50% off. Also, if you have never purchased a play or package before, you can use Try WT when checking out for a daily or three-day all-access pass. Uh, try somebody out, see how their write-ups are, see how they give out their plays, and you can get 50% off using that Try WT promotional code there. Again, that's only for one use only, and it's for a uh, daily or three-day all-access pass. Guys, one more game, then best bets. Buster, going right to you. Seattle Kraken, Colorado Avalanche. As I was about to say a few moments ago, all four dogs cashed in two nights ago. Seattle was one of them. They're plus 190 tonight. Colorado minus 235, minus one and a half. That's plus 125. And the total is at six. What do you have for us in this one, Buster? Yeah, well, I might be uh, as repetitive as repetitive can be. Obviously, I'm not going to lay 220. On, uh, on Colorado, that's for sure. Uh, again, I actually like Colorado here, and I but I like it over. I do like it over. I I, I think they they had a hard time scoring that last game, and I believe things are going to be way different tonight. And uh, Bednar talked about 
it looks like Colorado's going to get some guys back. Cogliano, Helm, Johnson are all supposed to play according to the head coach. So that is really, I think, really helps them. I think it motivates them. And Seattle might be, again, like a lot of these game teams, these underdog teams that won the first game, they know teams are going to be coming right out for them. So it's, uh, it might be almost a, okay, let's just play as defensive as we can, stay in the game, and then maybe get them late. And Seattle's a very good club that can do stuff like that. But I really believe the play here will be Colorado. I will take them in regulation. And I do like the over. I'm, I'm looking at a, a maybe a 5-2, 5-3. I think Colorado gets their goals. They just didn't, even though they played all right last game, I mean, it wasn't totally bad. They just, they just didn't seem themselves. I think you see what the champs are really all about tonight. Not that a team like them should need it here, Carm, but uh, it was certainly a wake-up call, a reality check, whatever expression you want to use for this Avalanche team in Game 1. What are you thinking here for Game 2, Carm, Avalanche and Kraken? Yeah, the price is high, and for the reason. It's uh, Stanley Cup champions uh, down one game uh, one game to nothing at home and not wanting to lose a second game. Uh, I have to, I'm going to disagree a little bit on Bust, uh, with Buster uh, as far as like the total goes. Uh, I would lean the under in this game just because, again, uh, I, I want to be reactionary to all the goals we saw yesterday uh, across those four games. But these are two teams that have now played four times this year, three during the regular season, one in the playoffs. Every single game has gone under, under the total, and uh, they haven't even been close to the total. They've been 2-1, 3-2 type games, 3-1 type games. Uh, and I think I, I think Colorado is going to be a lot better tonight, uh, and that's one of the reasons why. If I'm looking at the under, I'm looking at the taking the under for the Seattle team total. It's at two and a half minus one thirty five on the under, and I wouldn't mind taking that because I'm not sure if they get the three tonight or not. Because I don't think it's going to be as an op as open game as everyone believes it to be. I think Colorado eventually gets the money, much like the Oilers game yesterday that. Uh, it pushed on. It pushed on the over uh, at the end with with the empty netter, but that was a game that looked like a dead under throughout uh, throughout that one. So I'm leaning under on this game, um, but uh, I think as far as the play goes, just because I can't lay the 220, you could look at the regulation line uh, on Colorado, much like everyone did with Edmonton yesterday, myself included. I'm going to take the Seattle team total under two and a half goals here, minus 135. They might be happy to get back home with a split of this. Uh, of this, uh, these opening two games in a series in which I don't think people gave them uh, much of a chance of winning one game in the series, and they've already accomplished that. I won't waste much time because uh, I heard you saying the under, and then I was about to say the team total under, and then right when you were finishing up, you mentioned that as well, Carm. So I like that play too, uh, Seattle team total under. And the reason why is because if you like the full game under, um, that favorite might get an empty net goal or the favorite, you know, Colorado in this instance might score some late ones and shut down Seattle. And I would just hate to lose an under in this game uh, when Colorado wins 5-2 and all of a sudden Seattle only scores two goals and their team total still stays under. So at minus 135, that's a pretty good price, I think. And I'll stick with that as well for my play on this game for the show. And you got to kind of keep it simple, stupid here, but uh, I'm looking at two guys for shots on goal props. Valerie Nichushkin, who's just proven over time to be a big playoff guy for them. And of course, Nathan McKinnon, hard to argue with him to get on the board. Looking at him over one and a half points for today for him for the Colorado Avalanche. Let's go over uh, some best bets here, guys. Best bets and uh, what everybody has going on um, for their clients. So Buster, for you over at sportsmemo.com, what do you have going on for your clients? Okay, thank you, Andrew. It's, as you had mentioned, it's uh, Throwback Thursday at Sports Memo and Wager Talk. Half off all packages, and you can get, which is a really good deal, you can get a one-day all-access pass for only $20. So we have uh, an NBA and a couple, I think, an MLB going tonight. Number one in MLB so far this year at Sports Memo. I'll knock wood there. As we know, MLB, it's a long race, just like uh, NHL is. So I'm uh, really happy about that. Uh, also, we have up at Sportsman, we have a NHL best bet double play 
uh, basically probably talked about both those uh, games on here. So you're better off watching the show and just grabbing that one day package for 20 bucks. So as far as the show play, Colorado, we think that they're going to come out. We think they score a bunch of goals. I know they've played a bunch of unders. I just think the chance just come out and say, you know, now that they've got uh, three more guys back that are quality players, I just, I just believe that they come out and take it to Seattle tonight. We're going to take Colorado first period puck line minus a half plus 135. As I said, do or die for the champs. So looking for a big effort out of them tonight. And, uh, Again, uh, happy 420 to everybody. Everybody be safe who are partaking in today's uh, festivities. And best of luck with all your plays, everybody. And as always, have a great day. Always great to see you, Buster. And hey, it might not be a Tuesday, but if you're on, we have a first period play. Gotta love it. Carm, what do you have going today for your clients? And uh, what's your best bet for us? Yeah, first, I'm going to mention uh, sort of the deals that we talked about uh, throughout the season, uh, throughout the, the show. Uh, today is 50% off at Wager Talk on all packages. We also have the Weekend Warrior, uh, which is code WW20, where you can get $20 off a three-day all access. Now, obviously, because the prices uh, are slashed to 50% today, it's a, it, you might as well save that coupon code for tomorrow. Use the 50% off today. Uh, get any package for 50% off, including the one-day all-accesses that go from 39 to 1950. Use the WW20 tomorrow with your profits from today. And one other deal that I have up, uh, coupon code uh, CUP50. You can get uh, $50 off the rest of my NHL uh, playoffs. Uh, uh, it's been a great year. We're up over 115 units on the season and playoffs thus far. As far as my show best bet, um, Pierre Luc Dubois today for uh, tonight for uh, Winnipeg shots on goal over two and a half minus one thirty five. He had uh, three in game one of this series. He's he's gone over the total in four of his last five and nine of his last twelve. And I, I think Winnipeg. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens tonight, but I think Winnipeg is going to be a big part of tonight's game. They're going to put the pressure on the Vegas Golden Knights, and Dubois will get his shots on goal. So over two and a half shots on goal minus one thirty five as the show best bet. Great stuff there. Love that uh, shots on goal prop. And again, congratulations, Carm, on the great season you're having, continuing it right into the playoffs. Uh, for me, it's a 6-2 and two start to the postseason. Feeling pretty good. Uh, not releasing any more than two plays so far per night. Uh, and you can find all my content here or on Twitter for my other plays, but mostly just two plays a night for clients. I do have a package going right now for the first 10 buyers only. This is a huge discounted price. You can get the entire playoff package for me. You're going to get serious wagers. You're going to get prop wagers. You're going to get side wagers, totals wagers. It was $219. You can get it for $149. This is good for only the first 10 buyers that use this at my website at wagertalk.com, wt.buzz slash am. So you can use that and get a massive discount there. Get every play that I release. And my best bet for the show for today, we're going to go with the over five and a half Rangers Devils. We saw the game one go over, but it went over with the Rangers scoring five goals and seeing this Devils team only score one at home in game one. I believe they will correct that and they will bounce back. But I also do not think they can contain the Rangers either. This one should be a high scoring contest and we're getting a five and a half. I love those totals. I'll take the over. Rangers, Devils. Carmine has Pierre-Luc Dubois over on his shots. And Buster has Colorado on the puck line in the first period. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll see you tomorrow. If you love $9 Monday and $2 Tuesday, you're really going to appreciate our new Throwback Thursday when all daily packages are slashed in half. Yes, you heard right at both wagertalk.com and sportsmemo.com. All Thursday daily packages are now 50% off. This means that a 4% package will be only $12.50. A 5% top rated play, normally priced at $35, will be only $17.50. And the hottest sales item of the day, get a full day of access from the handicappers of your choice. That's one day of every applicable play they release, including any 5% best bets, normally priced at $39, for only $19.50. The best part is you can come back every Thursday to take advantage of this limited time 50% off spring off.